Hi, my name is Adam Rodriguez, and I'm an immigration attorney located in Silver Spring, Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C. Today, I'm here to answer some common questions that our lawful users have regarding immigration laws in the United States. So I'm going to go through a few questions that our users have submitted. I'll try to be brief in my responses, but as accurate as I can. And then I want to share some exciting, cool things that the Lawfully uh, platform has for you guys. Um, so let's get right to it. If I have corrected my name on my birth certificate, do I need to have a police clearance that has my previous name? And as a general rule, I always tell my clients, yes, if you've uh, previously had a, a mis uh, an incorrect name or if you've legally changed your name, you're going to want to get documentation from the police um, agency, basically saying that no records exist for that individual or if records do exist, whatever they may be you know, just bring them to the embassy because they're, they're going to want to make sure that you're not inadmissible to the United States. Uh, so to answer the question, yes, I would recommend that you obtain either police clearance and some, some sort of document saying that no, uh, no criminal history exists for that individual, if, if, if that's what's applicable. The other question is, is an I-140 approval a prerequisite for an I-485 approval? And generally, yes, uh, USCIS won't approve an I-485 application unless the I-130 is uh, approved or if the I-140 is approved. Um, an I-485 based on either an employment category or a family preference or an immediate relative category does need that petition, the underlying petition to be approved, whether it's the I-130 or the I-140. Um, sometimes you can file them concurrently, which means you can file them both at the same time with your green card application, your I-485. I um, but they, they're not going to just approve the I-485 and not approve the I-140 or the I-130. Those are, those are required to be approved first because you need to have a visa available. Um, and that's that petition is what would give you the visa. Um, so in, in some, yes, you, in essentially the I-140 or the I-130 uh, do need to be approved first before the, I-140, uh, before the I-485 can be approved. Sorry. Uh, the next question is, my wife is a lawful permanent resident. She submitted an I-130 for me since February 2020, and the case re received and receded. If the petition is approved while I'm, while I'm in the United States with a visa waiver, can I adjust my status? And the answer to that is no. Um, the visa waiver program kind of gives uh, foreign travelers flexibility, and it's kind of a shortcut into um, entry into the United States. So the government is really trying to prevent people from abusing it and just coming here and overstaying their visas. So lawful permanent resident petitioners um, aren't able to have their beneficiaries adjust that, their status in the United States if their entry was with a visa waiver. You're gonna wanna be on a B1, B2 for that. Um, and again, you can't really uh, use a B1, B2 visa to just adjust status in the United States. That would be fraud. Um, because your intention on a B1, B2 is to come here to visit the United States, um, not to, you know, uh, overstay and, and then adjust status. That would, that would be committing immigration fraud. And it would also um, cause, you know, grounds of misrepresentation that you want to avoid. Um, but no, just to quickly answer the question, the answer is no. Uh, all right, the next question. If I got an I-130 approval while in removal proceedings, is it faster to seek adjustment of status with the immigration judge or with USCIS? And that really depends on your jurisdiction. Um, so where I practice here in, in the DC area, um, I've been able to get um, my clients adjusted before an immigration judge, sometimes within 30, 45 days. Um, but really you're gonna want to make sure that the immigration judge has available time slots for, your, for an individual hearing. Um, and the best way to do that is if you have an attorney, have your attorney reach out to the um, immigration court, specifically the clerk for uh, your immigration judge and see what, what they may have. Um, you're also going to want to check USCIS.gov and see what the timeframes are for that local field office that you're, where, where you're located in. Um, because sometimes it might be quicker to do it through USCIS. Sometimes it might be quicker through the immigration court. Like it might... Um, practice, I've been able to adjust people quickly in Baltimore and in Arlington. Um, you know, 30 days, or I think 45 was the most recent one that I did. Uh, whereas here, um, if, if they would have gone through USCIS, they would have probably been waiting at least 15 months before they got an interview and then maybe longer for a decision. Um, 
it really depends and you're going to just want to uh, kind of talk to an attorney in, in your area or, or an attorney in general that, that knows what they're doing with, with immigration um, so they can coordinate that because it, it does involve coordination. Um, all right, the next question is, can I apply for my marriage-based green card application online? And the answer to that is no. Um, USCIS does have several forms that you can complete online and, and submit online. Um, your naturalization application is one of them. Um, the I-130 petition is another. But the actual green card application or, or the actual term is the adjustment of status application, that has to be mailed um, via regular U.S. mail or you know, FedEx, UPS, whatever it is you use. Uh, but it cannot be done via the Internet um, portal yet. But I assume in, in no time USCIS will probably um, provide that as an option just because it's it's faster for, for everyone. It's better for USCIS and it's better for clients to do it through the online portal. But for now, no. All you can do um, in terms of marriage-based cases is just the 130 online. All right. The next question we have says, can I use my approved advanced parole while my I-140 application is still pending? And this is a little bit of a tricky question because uh, this question doesn't really elaborate on what else might be pending. Um, for example, an I-140 application alone doesn't give you an advanced parole document. So assuming that in this question, the individual also has a pending adjustment of status application and that's how they got their advanced parole, um, then yes, if your uh, adjustment of status application is still pending and you have a valid and approved advanced parole that is still uh, valid, then yes, you can go ahead and, and usually travel. Um, if you have more like specific concerns, if you have some criminal history or an admiss in, 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 uh, inadmissibility issues, um, then you're going to want to kind of talk to an immigration attorney and, and share your case file with them. And they'll be able to give you a better answer than I'm going to be able to give you through this video. Um, but generally, even if, if you have an advanced parole approved, you're usually pretty good to travel. I've had clients travel on removal orders with advanced parole. Um, like a lot of my TPS clients have uh, removal orders from, you know, decades ago, but they have advanced paroles that they get through um, their TPS and, and they travel without any issues. All right. The next question says, as of March 19, 2021, my, my fingerprints have been applied to my other forms. Does this mean that I'm going to be approved for my for my green card and for my employment authorization? The answer to that is no. All that's saying is basically that the government is reusing your biometrics and applying them to other forms. Instead of having you uh, go back for this uh, application and taking fingerprints again, they're just going to reuse them from some other benefit that you've applied for in the past. And really that saves time and it also saves congestion at local USCIS offices. And this is something that the government has been doing more frequently um, since COVID started uh, to reduce um, exposure and, and you know, have more capacity to, to do other sorts of cases and also to speed up cases from people that maybe um, haven't had their fingerprints ever taken. They're going to get an appointment quicker than, you know, if USCIS was kind of fingerprinting everyone for every benefit. So to keep it short, um, no, it doesn't mean that your green card application or your employment authorization application is going to be approved. Um, you can still be denied if, if you don't qualify for those benefits or if you've committed certain crimes. What happens to my I-130 petition if I withdraw my I-485? That's a really good question. So the I-130 petition is submitted by the petitioner, whereas the I-485, the adjustment of status application, is submitted by um, the applicant for adjustment of status. So if you withdraw your I-485, you're not going to be able to withdraw your I-130 because the I-130 can only be withdrawn by the petitioner. Um, so if you withdraw your I-485, your I, uh, the I-130 will still remain valid um, and pending unless the petitioner themselves go ahead and, and withdraw that. All right, and then the last thing I actually wanted to talk about since we still have a few minutes is I wanted to talk about this really cool feature that Lawfully has. Um, it's called the USCIS Case Status Message Explorer. And kind of what it does is it lets you track your case and, and know kind of like more or less 
uh, what the projection of your case moving forward will be. And it's really cool because they have various um, categories available. Like you can see um, your i765, you can also see uh, your i45, your i130, your advanced parole documents, i129s, uh, i129fs, and really you're going to want to go into USC, uh, sorry, lawfully.com, go to the case status explorer on the top of, of the menu bar. And then from there, you're just going to want to click, um, you know, how your case has progressed in the same sequence. Um, and it'll kind of give you a projection based on the algorithms of other uh, USCIS applications, um, how long they've taken, how long yours might take, what the possible next status might be, what other people may have ha um, had as their next uh, case status update. And it kind of like helps you know where you stand in line, what to expect. Um, like ex For example, a lot of the consultations I have sometimes through Lawfully, they just, clients just want to know what's what's going to happen, whether they can travel, um, you know, and, and not have to come back early because they're going to get scheduled for an interview. And all of this is kind of more or less possible through the USEIS case status message ex explorer on lawfully.com. Um, and it's updated constantly. Like, for example, it was last updated December 10th, which is today. Um, and it's scheduled to have another update tomorrow. Um, so I really recommend you guys to, you know, check that out. Obviously, it's not a perfect science, um, but it provides a more clear view of where your case stands and what you could expect to possibly happen next. Um, and, you know, we're going to have more videos um, coming out soon and, and maybe we'll, we'll, we'll share the uh, case that is explored more in depth so you guys can kind of um, see it. But I definitely want to point it out to you guys. Um, because you might be able to benefit from those projections in the future. And as always, if you guys have any other questions, you know, Lawfully has a great community uh, forum. There's also an Immigration 101 section. And of course, they have the attorney consultations where if you guys have any specific questions, um, you can ask a licensed um, attorney um, those questions. And that's kind of all I have for you guys. Um, you know, if you have any other questions, um, I'm sure we're going to be doing more of these videos and I hope this was helpful for all of you and I hope you guys all have a happy holidays. Take care. Bye-bye.